Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide for Ethiopia for EU4 1.32 Origins. So Ethiopia is a nation located in the Horn of Africa region. We are one of the more powerful nations in this region but of course the threat of the Somalian nations and the Mamluks looms large. We're also a Coptic nation, one of the few Coptic nations and the most powerful one out of all of them. So we're going to be expanding into heathen lands and it's definitely not going to be easy with all of these nations disliking us. But with EU4 1.32 Origins, Ethiopia has gotten an awesome, awesome mission tree which I played through and honestly I can say that it's one of the most fun mission trees in the game and definitely one of my favorite ones and it's definitely very, very powerful. We also start off with a unique government form, the Nigusa Nagast Monarchy which gives us minus 1 national rest, minus 10% stab cost and minus 75% cost to move our capital. But we can get an even more powerful reform later. So, if you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like, it really helps out the channel a lot and it lets me know that you guys enjoyed the video and if you want to see more guides or more EU4 videos in general, definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. Let's take a look at what we need to do as Ethiopia. So of course, as you guys see, we start off with some beta Israel separatists over here which we need to take care of pretty quickly and will help us unlock a mission in our mission tree and we also start off with two subjects, Damat and Hadia. One of them has a gold mine, we'll be annexing them soon and we'll be getting even more gold mines soon. But first we need to choose a blessing for our faith. The Coptic nation has five blessings that you get from controlling and converting to Coptic these holy sites right here. We start off with Axum and we're going to be getting the other ones pretty soon. For your first blessing I recommend choosing send monks to establish monasteries for plus 1.5 missionary strength. The CCR is very nice as well but we don't have a lot of missionary strength in the early game and we need it to convert these provinces here so we can get less rebels. So we're going to choose the send monks to establish monasteries. Then we're going to add some rivals. Choose the nations that rivaled you, of course. Next, we're going to go into our states and some of the diet. You can pick whichever agenda is best for you. Then we're going to give the clergy religious state and clerical advisory council. We're going to give the nobility primacy of the nobility, increased levies, and aristocratic counselors. There is no need to give them strong duchies, even though we have two subjects, and there's also no need to take the nobility integration policy for a reduced diplomatic hit from annexing subjects. These guys are small, no one's going to be angry at us, and this costs too much influence. We're also going to give the burghers land of commerce, patronage of the arts, and indebted to the burgers, no commercial advisory board. We want to keep burger influence low because later we're going to be giving them a privilege which has very high influence. Next we're going to activate the encouraged development state edict in our capital state of central Ethiopia and we're going to dev the province of Dembia up once in Diplo. Now it's time to take care of these rebels. We're going to do that by giving our ruler military command he is a 655, so we're only going to use him to beat up these rebels, and after that, don't put him in charge of your armies. And we're just going to send them here to Dembia so we can catch these rebels. We're not making enough money at the start, so we're not going to be hiring any advisors just yet. And even though we have a free merchant, we also can't send him anywhere because everything is too far away from us. Now we just need to beat up these rebels. In the meantime, we can royal marry our subject Damat and we're gonna try and find some alliances. I recommend allying a nation in the Arabian Peninsula such as Yemen, Aden or Hajramut, some of these guys over here, and one nation over here which we're not gonna fight immediately such as Maheran for example. I'm also gonna start improving with Yemen. And there we go, once we beat up the rebels and get back the province of Semien, we can unlock the mission. Gideon's Revolt, the Kingdom Semyon event happens. This is that event where we can show them the way of the Coptic faith, basically we lose two stab and Semyon loses their course on Axum and Dembia and the religion immediately changes to Coptic in these two provinces or we gain stab, we can't convert them right away, we'll convert them in a couple of decades though and yeah we just gain one stab. I recommend taking this one, we'll convert them later. Now to advance down our mission tree we need to have on army size 100% of our force limit. That's around six more regiments and as Ethiopia we have the unique unit the Kawa. As we can see we can conscript the Kawa here and I'll show you their powers as soon as we do that. I recommend conscripting six of those guys but don't recruit them for here instead go into the production interface and recruit them from here Kawa infantry. Each one is gonna cost five mil points so there we go one two three four five 
6. And our army is up to force limit for 30 mil points and no ducats. As we can see, they have minus 25% land attrition, minus 25% reinforce speed, so that's why they start off tiny, minus 15% shock damage received, but plus 25% reinforced cost. They are pretty strong. I do recommend recruiting them instead of regular infantry. And now that we can unlock the mission Ethiopia's army, we gain perma claims down here. And these are exactly the first nations that we'll be expanding into. Our main focus is going to be Kaffa since they have a gold mine, so we're just gonna fight Janjiro, Kaffa, and Walyata. After we take care of these guys, we're gonna be moving on these nations or these nations up here. So it's time to wait for these guys to buff up, and in the meantime, we'll move our armies here and recruit an actual general. Or you can give your air military command, since he is pretty bad, nowhere near as good as our god ruler. So that's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give my air military command. In the meantime, you can start improving with both subjects. Of course, after we've taken care of the rebels, we can also sell titles and seize land. And now that we've arrived here, we'll immediately be declaring on Janjiro. It doesn't matter who they're allied to, if they're allied to some of these guys, just co-belligerent them. And there we go. At this point, you should also start converting provinces. As Ethiopia, we also start off with a great monument in the province of Lasta, the rock hewn churches at Lalibela. It's at level 2 and it gives us missionary strength plus 1, yearly prestige plus 0.5 and missionary maintenance cost minus 5%. We won't strictly be focusing on upgrading it, but it will be nice to have. And there we go, my heir just died because I put him in charge of an army. That's actually great. If he doesn't die, you can just disinherit him. We don't want a 1-2-1 one, one ruler later. Of course, once we've beaten up Janjiro, we will be full annexing them. And as soon as that's done, we'll be declaring on either Kaffa or Walyata. Walyata here doesn't have any allies, so I'll declare on them first. And of course, once we've also beaten up the second nation here, we will be full annexing them as well. If one of these guys are allied to someone else, check to see if you can co-belligerent them and annex them as well. These guys usually ally each other or some nations up here. And you can full annex the guys up here if you co-belligerent them too. Make sure you don't border the Mamluks though. So if it's someone like Alodia or Dongola, full annex them. If it's someone like Medibari and Beja, you may want to leave them alone to avoid bordering the Mamluks. But now that I've ended that war, Yemen seems to be willing to ally me and I will ally them as well. Like I said, we want an ally over here that we won't fight immediately immediately and an ally over here. We're not going to be going to Arabia this soon. But now that that war is done as well, I will be declaring on the third nation here, the nation of Kaffa. They seem to be allied to Medibari and I won't co-belligerent them since we get cores on Medibari later. I'll just white piece them and I'll declare for Kaffa. Once you have above 150 relations with both of your subjects, the mission Damot and Hadiya will be able to be unlocked and this event happens. So they shall become part of our nation and we get minus 25% diplo annex cost or we get income from them and reduce liberty desire. Of course we're gonna take the first option for cheaper integration. We also gain claims on these areas right here. And of course once we've beaten up the third nation here, we will be full annexing them as well. At this point you should have only one or no nations left. The next nation I'm gonna fight is an Rhea right here. They seem to be allied to Elodia, which is right here. We already have claims on them, so let's see if we can co-belligerent them. And Makuria and Medibari will join as well, but that's fine. These are easy nations to beat up and we'll just be white-piecing the ones we don't want to conquer, like Makuria and Medibari. So there we go. I'm gonna be annexing an Area and Elodia in this war. Basically at this point we're just cleaning these guys up down here and the guys up here that don't border the Mamluks, such as Dongola and Elodia. And now that I've defeated these nations as well, I will be full annexing both of them. There we go. And after we've taken care of these nations down here, and after we've gotten tech 4 in admin, diplo and mill, we can focus on unlocking this mission here, the ancestors capital. Of course, once we take care of all the guys down here, we can also unlock this, conquer the south, it will give us missionary strength and local death cost for 25 years. We are gonna take it immediately. But speaking of the mission, the ancestors capital, we need to dev up Axum right here five times. Of course, like I said, only do it after you've taken tech 4, but we're gonna activate the encouraged development state edict in Tigre and we're gonna dev Axum up five times. I recommend devving it up in mill and dip. But once we've wrapped up everything down here, we're gonna chill for a few years to fight some rebels and wait to be able to annex our subjects. And after we dev up Axum for the fifth time, we will be able to take the mission, the Ancestor's Capital. It starts construction of a cathedral for free, it gives us a dev discount and yearly prestige, and we also gain cores on these three provinces in Medibari right here. Of course, after we've cored up everything in this area right here with the Kaffa gold mine, we are gonna be making it into a state, full stating it, and we're gonna be devving 
in Kafa up to 10 production. It is gonna be very expensive since it is Highlands, but we do need to do this. Don't forget to reduce autonomy as well. After you've gotten at least one gold mine from Kafa or Damot, I strongly recommend hiring an inflation reduction guy. I don't have one, so I'm gonna fire these guys until one pops up. Once you've reached religious unity of at least 75%, it is time for us to unlock this mission, secure religious unity. So to do that, we also need a theologian or an inquisitor. That's a missionary strength or an unrest guy. I do have a missionary strength guy right here from one of the events or a mission. There we go. And now we can unlock that mission. Boom. We gain some unrest in some provinces that we conquered as well as tax. But now that that's done, I will be swapping back to the yearly inflation reduction guy. Once 10 years have passed, of course, it is time to annex both of our subjects. Sure, you could hire a diplo rep advisory if you have one. Mine is level two, so I won't be getting him. And I'll annex both of these guys at the same time. For your tier two government reform, of course, I recommend taking strength and noble privileges. For your first idea group, I recommend taking quantity ideas. We need this a lot because the terrain here is very, very rough and it's gonna cause a lot of attrition as well as all the deserts in the north and in the south and we need it to fight the Mamluks' massive, massive army. So quantity ideas for your first idea group. After this, you can start focusing on mill. And just a few months after you've started annexing your subjects, the annexation will be done. By this point, we also have our second gold mine in Damod. I have Devt Kafa up to nine. There we go it's up to 10 so I can turn off the edict there and I can activate it here because we will be deving Damot up to 10 production as well. But after you've taken care of everything down here it is time to commence our wars versus the nations north of us. Now Medibari seems to have shrunk in my case so I would recommend the first war to be versus them and for us to take back our cores it's fine to border the Mamluks now or you can just fight Beja, Dongola or Makuria. But if Alodia still exists it is very important to fight them among the first nations as well because we need the province of Soba up here. This is where we're going to be spawning the Renaissance after we move our capital there. We do have a minus 75% discount in moving our capital and as we can see right here it's going to cost just 50 admin points to move it to any province. This is because Soba right here is a center of trade and it is drylands which is only 5% more expensive compared to our original capital of Gondor which is 20% more expensive. There aren't any better provinces to dev the Renaissance over here in except for drylands or the farmlands down here but we're not very close to conquering these lands at this point in the game and in my case i'll be declaring on the nation of dogola right here you can fight whichever nation you want out of medibori beja dongola alodia and makuri it's annoying that they're held to this tiny nation right here but we're gonna get around it no big deal after you've gotten admin tech 5 and miltech 5 it is time to move our capital to soba if we have it of course we're not waiting for diplotech 5 because we're using diplo to dev up kafa and dama at this point. Oop, there we go. So we're just gonna move our capital to Soba for 50 admin points. Of course I'm at war so I can't move it right now but as soon as you get those techs and you have Soba it is time to move it. Once you dev up both Damot and Kafa to at least six production you will be able to unlock the mission the riches of Kafa. We gain minus 100 local autonomy in those two provinces as well as plus one local goods produced and 100 government reform progress. We have lots of powerful missions that give us gov reform progress and they're very strong. And we're just moving along with our conquest in the north even though my war versus Dongola isn't done because of these guys right here I will be declaring on Beja. Remember after we clean these guys up we move on these guys and there we go. Call in your Arabian allies to help you fight these guys if you can. Yemen won't join because I just annexed my vassals. After you've unlocked the mission Secure Religious Unity, it is time to move on this one. Resolve the Sabbath issue, where we need the clergy to be at least 65% loyal. So I recommend doing diets that will give the clergy loyalty, such as this one for example right here, and you could even give them another privilege such as, I don't know, enforced unity of faith for example, or expansionist zealotry. It's up to you. And of course we'll be full annexing any nations that we're fighting up here as well. Once you conquer at least 8 provinces in these northern areas right here, you will be able to unlock the mission Unify the Tribes. We gain a Siberian frontier in this province right here. Pretty nice. And we gain Nubian as an accepted culture. There we go. At this point, you should also start improving relations with Mamluk rivals, such as the Timurids, the Ottomans, and QQ in my example. I am gonna start improving with QQ and with the Timurids as well. And I'll be finally annexing Dongola as well. Now that my wars are done, I will be moving my capital to Soba. You will have probably 
already done this. After this, we're gonna activate the Encourage Development State Edict, and we're gonna be spawning the Renaissance in the province of Soba. Dev it up mainly with Diplo and Mill, or maybe if you're still devving up the gold mines, then dev it in Admin and Mill. It's also a good idea to save up 200 ducats first, so we can upgrade the Center of Trade to level 2. That will give us another dev discount, which is pretty nice. But while we're spawning the Renaissance in Soba, we can continue our conquests and clean up anyone that's left up here, such as in my case Medibari and Makuria. Fight whoever is left, pretty much. Of course, after we unlock the mission The Riches of Kaffa, we also got the extremely powerful controlled gold mining Burger's Privilege. This gives us minus 75% monthly gold inflation reduction and minus 75% monthly gold depletion reduction for the cost of plus 5% all power costs. But it is also very, very expensive in terms of other things. It gives us minus 30 max absolutism. That's not a big deal since we remove privileges before the age of absolutism anyway, but it also gives the Burger's third. 30% influence. That is so, so hard to get rid of. So I recommend removing every burger privilege except for land of commerce for plus one monthly diplo. There we go. I'll remove patronage of the arts and now I'll give them controlled gold mine. It will be pretty difficult to get rid of, but at least we won't have to deal with inflation reduction. Now I know some people are thinking, wait, if it's minus 75% monthly depletion chance, shouldn't the sweet spot for gold production not be 10? Shouldn't it instead be way higher, something like 20? Yes, the sweet spot is no longer 10 if you have controlled gold mining, but at that point, do you really even need more gold? Right now, we're making 17 a month from gold, and as soon as we dev up Damad up to 10, we'll be making something like 23 probably. So sure, you could dev it up more than 10 with this privilege, but it's not really needed in my opinion. For your tier 3 government reform, I recommend taking centralized bureaucracy. At this point, you may even want to improve relations with the Mamluks. As we can see, they don't hate me in my case, but maybe they'll think of declaring. So why not improve as much as we can with them, right? Of course, after you've devved up Soba enough to spawn the Renaissance, you should be embracing it around this time. I only need a couple of more ducats to embrace it, so I'll wait for like a month. And there we go, this is sort of around the time you embrace it. And of course, once we're done fighting whoever we're fighting up here, Makuria in my case, we will be full annexing them as well. And once you take the province of Kasser Ibrim from Makuria, we also have a second Coptic holy site. It is Sunni though, so we will need to convert it before we gain another blessing. But that is pretty much the second holy site that we're gonna be getting. And of course, once you've taken care of the nations down here and the nations up here, with the exception of Medibori in my case, it is time to shift our attention over to the Somalian nations. The first nation we're gonna be fighting is of course Adal. So, it's time to chill a bit for like a year or two after we fought these guys and prepare to fight Adal. And in my case, I'm just gonna be popping off this quick war versus Medibari. In your case, you probably have all your cores that you got from the mission from Medibari back by now. And there we go. Of course, once you have at least some provinces in the Alexandria trade node, we're finally gonna be sending that second merchant somewhere, and I recommend telling him to collect from Alexandria. And I'll be full annexing Medibari as well. Like I said earlier, you would have taken all your cores back from them, in which case, you will have unlocked the mission Restore a Duelist. Of course, first you need to convert Masawa to Coptic, and dev it up five times, just like we did with Axum right here, and then you will get claims on these areas right here. We will see how that looks like once I fight at all. But around the 14th 60s, you should have Kaffa and Damat up to 10 production, and you should have spawned the Renaissance. And there we go, I will be declaring on Adal right now. Sure, they're a slightly bigger nation than the other guys, and you can call in someone if you want to. I am gonna call in Maharan, so they'll help me deal with Mahra over here. I don't wanna have to walk over to Arabia. I'm just gonna declare a reconquest for one of these up here, which won't by many Bari. Of course, you will be declaring with a regular claims from the mission. Once you've beaten up Adal, of course you will want to take the most you can from them. You will have claims on all of these provinces from the previous mission, which I still don't have. But in my case, I'll just be getting these cores back that we got here from the mission. And I'll be focusing on these highly valuable provinces, such as their capital right here, and this one that has a center of trade. In fact, I'll be full annexing them. Once you gain ports, of course you will already have done this through Medibori, you will unlock this mission right here where we gain a shipyard, some sailors, and lose ducats, but at least the shipyard is cheaper. After we unlock that, we will want to start building up a navy, light ships to protect trade and add in, and galleys to help us fight the Mamluks in the Red Sea. Now this may be intimidating, but I do recommend rivaling the Mamluks once you can actually rival them. This will help us ally their other rivals, such as the Timurids, the Ottomans, if you can see them, and QQ as well. And this is the mission I was talking about. 
about after you've improved Masawa, you will get claims on some provinces over here, I already have them, and we also gain some dev in the province of Masawa, as well as the level 2 center of trade. Pretty awesome mission. Once you finally convert Kasser Ibrim to Coptic, you will be able to unlock your second blessing. I recommend taking Will of the Martyrs for plus 2.5 discipline for your second one, it will help us out a bit versus the Mamluks or promote territorial rights for minus 10% CCR. I do think this is slightly better since 2.5 discipline isn't that much, especially in the early game, so I'm gonna be taking promote territorial rights. You will also be able to unlock the mission Takeover Kasser Ibrim, where we gain plus 10% morale of armies for 25 years and perma claims on Egypt. You may want to hold off from taking this mission until you're ready to fight the Mamluks, so that's what I will be doing. I won't take it yet, so it doesn't expire by the time we're ready to fight the Mamluks. Once you're done chilling from your first war with the Somalian nations, it is time to move on. You will have claims on these areas. I'll be declaring on Ajran now to get back this core and this province that I have a claim on. It is a nice opportunity since their ally Kilwa won't join. And now we're just focusing on these guys right here. We basically want to own the entire Horn of Africa region, which is up until here. Once you complete all the requirements for this mission right here, and most importantly, once you get the clergy above 65 loyalty, you will be able to unlock the mission Biblical Sabbath Reform, a very, very powerful mission, 100 Gov Reform Progress, plus 35% Religious Unity for 25 years, and the Clergy Privilege Biblical Sabbath Reform, which you will see now. This is that reform, it gives us plus 1 Missionary Strength, plus 1 Tolerance of the True Faith, plus 25% monthly reform progress which is excellent and minus 10% national tax which isn't a bad buff at all. I do recommend taking away another privilege from the clergy before giving this out. I will take away clerical advisory council and give them biblical sabbath reform. And now that I've defeated Adran, I will be taking almost everything that I can from them. Once again we're focusing mainly on the Horn of Africa region so no need to take anything down here in East Africa just yet. I don't even recommend expanding too much this way as Ethiopia our main expansion routes will be going north instead of south so I'll be taking almost everything from them just leaving them with their possessions outside of the Horn of Africa region. There we go. Once you conquer a big enough portion of these provinces right here you will be able to unlock the mission Conquer at all. We gain some more perma claims on the provinces we haven't conquered. Once you build up a decent sized navy you will be able to unlock the mission Create the Ethiopian navy. Basically, we'll gain vision over the Mediterranean and stuff like that. Because we're blazing through these reforms due to all the stuff from the missions, for your tier 4 government reform I recommend taking meritocratic recruitment. It seems that in my game Armenia has popped out over here for some reason and of course you guys know that they're Coptic and they control the province of Yerevan which is basically one of the holy sites. Now 99% of the time this isn't gonna happen in your game but I just want to point out that any Coptic nation can gain a blessing if any holy site is controlled by another Coptic nation. So we're not the only nation that, that's getting the blessing. Other Coptic nations, such as Armenia, can also unlock three blessings just as ourselves. Now because this isn't gonna happen in your game, and at this point you're probably not gonna be picking a third blessing yet, I'm not gonna choose a blessing even though I can. The most likely third holy site we're gonna get is Alexandria. And in fact Yerevan is the last holy site that we're gonna get. So I'm not gonna be picking a blessing but just wanted to point out the fact that you can gain blessings if other Coptic nations also have that holy site. For your first stage ability it really doesn't matter too much what you pick, none of these will give us a significant boost. Maybe you can go with the adaptive combat terrain to help you fight the Mamluks, maybe you can go with the aggressive expansion impact so these guys here don't get too angry. And of course we're just continuing to clean up these nations right here. And of course I'll be full annexing this nation here as well. Now, when one of the most important opportunities arises, it is very important that we seize it. The Ottoman Mamluk War. As you know, the AI is a lot more aggressive in 132, and it should be happening around this time, the Ottomans declaring on the Mamluks. In my case, they're losing two wars versus Medina as well, and versus the Ottomans. This is precisely the time where we need to declare on the Mamluks as well. Of course, you could do this, or there is another option to declare on them not while they're in the war with the Ottomans, but that involves, once again, allying someone like QQ or even the Ottomans and then declaring on them on your own terms. The most important thing you need to watch out for in the war with the Mamluks is that they shouldn't have better Miltech than you because up until Miltech 9 we actually have better pips on our units so our army is a little stronger and the Mamluks don't have any military buffs in their national ideas and they usually don't take mill idea groups in their early idea groups either so the only real problem when fighting the Mamluks is their massive manpower or 
their mill tech which could be ahead of us. Of course by this point we should have buffs to our manpower as well from quantity so in my case it is time to declare. Like I said declare on them when they're in the Ottoman war or when you've allied someone that can help you. You can even beat them alone while they're not in the war but of course it would take a little bit of a higher skill level to do that. In my case I'll be declaring on the Mamluks now. The most important thing to take is the province of Suakin right here. Of course before you fight the Mamluks don't forget to take the mission take over Kasser Ibrahim for perma claims on Egypt and plus 10% morale of armies. This is what that looks like. So it is time to declare. Like I said, for Suakin. For your second idea group, I recommend taking religious ideas. Some may say it's overkill due to the religious buffs that we're getting from the monuments, all the stuff in the missions, the holy sites, but we are pretty much the only Coptic nation in the world at this point, so why not get religious? We're gonna have to convert literally everything we conquer, and why not use one of the best CBs in the game along with that? So religious for your second idea group. I also recommend becoming defender of the faith. Once again, we're the only Coptic nation in the world, so we won't get a lot of buffs, but that plus one missionary is nice and we won't have to defend anyone either. And there we go, the war with the Mamluks is done. It was pretty difficult since I am by myself. It will be significantly easier if you have QQ or the Timurids or the Ottomans on your side, but it's your choice when you declare on them, either when they're losing to the Ottomans or when you get enough allies and declare on them yourself. But in this first war versus the Mamluks, the most important provinces to take are Suakin and Alexandria, and we will be doing that very easily. Basically, we want to split up the Mamluks in a couple of different pieces. Maybe we can do something like this. As you can see, I leave them with this piece here, this piece over here, and this piece right here. Maybe you could even do something like this. Split them up into four pieces. The choice is yours, but we want to decimate them as much as possible. We lock in this area right here from conquests from other nations and they're split up this will reduce their strength very very significantly but remember to take Suakin and Alexandria and do a lot of border gore like this and this is actually what I'm gonna take these provinces over here these provinces right here so they have this left over here this left over here this and this and I'm gonna be taking all their money and that is what your first war versus the Mamluks should look like of course once you conquer Suakin you'll be able to take this mission it changes to Coptic we gain some nice stuff and even more gov reform progress at this point you can even secure an alliance with the Ottomans sure you don't need their help but if you do need their help it's definitely very worth it to ally them and it is easy to ally them just improve with them you're both rival to the Mamluks it won't be difficult at all. Once you get the Pero de Covilla event where a Portuguese man comes to Ethiopia, you can honor him, banish him, or execute him. You should take the first option. Honor him. Let's see what happens when we choose that. And there we go. There is the mission, contact with Portugal. The event, an alliance with the Portuguese, happens. And there we go. Sail my son and make them an alliance offer. And let's see what happens when we choose this first option. This is the one you need to pick, by the way. Never the second one. And there we go. We discover Portugal. Portugal, we ally Portugal and Portugal becomes our historical friend. An extremely, extremely powerful mission that you unlock over here. Contact with Portugal. And by around the 1490s, your game should look a little something like this. Basically, we started off as Ethiopia and started working our way down our amazing mission tree, focusing first on the nations down here and annexing our subjects. After that, focusing on the nations up here. And once we beat them up, we turned our attention to the Somalian nations and started fighting them. Them. and by the time we were fighting these guys or after we got done fighting these guys depending on your situation we should have had an opportunity to fight the Mamluks as well like I said either when they're at war with the Ottomans or by getting alliances with the Timurids or QQ or the Ottomans and then declaring on them on your own terms just whenever you like it doesn't have to be when they're fighting the Ottomans we also dubbed up both of our gold mines Kaffa and Damat up to 10 production we moved our capital to the province of Soba increased that to a level 2 center of trade and spawned the renaissance there and in our first war with the Mamluks we focused on taking the province of Suakin and the province of Alexandria and splitting them up into as many pieces as we can while securing the region of Egypt for future conquests since we do need to conquer the entirety of Egypt. At this point we're making a ton of money of course I did take quite a few loans when fighting the Mamluks but it's nothing we'll pay it off pretty soon and we have a ton of income from that gold from trade and from production and we even have more than 30% crown land by seizing every opportunity that we can and of course you should have been building buildings during this point and you will continue to do so. I have all these marketplaces built up in all the 
center of trade provinces. I built quite a few production buildings in the high value trade good provinces and you will continue to do the same in provinces with copper for example, cotton, ivory. There aren't very valuable provinces here except for maybe the coffee ones but once you move into the region of Egypt you will be finding a lot more and once you go north you will be finding even more. Of course during this time we have been converting as well due to all the religious buffs that we're getting and from religious ideas as well. We should have two holy sites by now at least two basically Aksum right here and Kasser Ibrahim right here and the third one Alexandria which will be converting to Coptic and unlocking our third blessing. In my case I can unlock a third blessing because like I said Armenia popped out this won't happen in your campaign so that's why I haven't picked a third blessing because I don't want to influence what happens in my game too much with these so maybe it won't be the same in yours but you will continue to conquer all of these holy sites like I said we have three by now later you will conquer Antioquia from the Mamluks or from the Ottomans and then Yerevan most likely from QQ. After this point you will continue to follow along down your amazing mission tree you can even flip to western tech with this event right here once you do enough stuff and unlock these missions right here like I said the alliance with Portugal is an amazing mission which leaves down that mission tree and over here once you unite the horn you will get claims on Arabia and once you conquer enough provinces in Arabia 25 to be exact you will be able to unlock the mission surpassing the past where we can form the super super powerful nation of Axum. They have amazing national ideas way better than Ethiopia's and I do recommend forming Axum as soon as you unlock this mission. Now when you unlock it you will get that event and you will have a choice to form it immediately or not form it immediately and instead gain a decision. If you're going for the achievement Prester John or whatever it was called where you need to own Constantinople and stuff as Ethiopia then don't form Axum because that will ruin it for you and you won't be able to take the achievement. So if you're going for that achievement take the achievement first and then form Axum basically by taking the choice to take a decision later or if you already have that achievement or if you don't care about that form Axum immediately. Later down the line when you unlock your tier 6 government reform and when you have 3 stability and at least 9 admin points per month you will be able to unlock the mission centralize the state where you unlock the Solomonic Empire government reform. It is extremely powerful, it replaces the Nigusa Nagas monarchy reform and it allows you to establish a permanent capital. Before you take this mission move your capital to Alexandria because it will only cost you 50 admin points instead of 200 so remember to move your capital to Alexandria before taking that mission. And after this point you will continue to expand in all the same directions you've been expanding. I don't recommend going down south there's not a lot for us over here you can if you want to but our main focus like I said is up north. We will continue to wipe out the Somalian nations if you haven't done so already. We will continue to conquer Arabia, Egypt, Mashriq, Persia, Caucasia, Anatolia and the Balkans. Basically this is where we need to expand and maybe even into Europe by converting everything along the way and it will be a lot easier once you unlock the Deus Volt CB as well. Speaking of ideas, after you've taken quantity and religious, for your third idea group I recommend taking quality and for your fourth idea group I recommend taking economic. For your fifth I recommend taking offensive and for your sixth I recommend taking trade. The last two are pretty much up to you if you even play that far. For your two Tier 5 government reform I recommend taking general estates and then when the age of absolutism comes around I recommend taking royal decree. For tier 6 I recommend taking letas et moi and for tier 7 I recommend taking political absolutism. There's two achievements you can rack up as Ethiopia, a blessed nation where as a Coptic nation you need to take all five blessings. You will be doing that by expanding into all the regions. Like I said the five sites are Axum which we own, Kasser Ibrim which we will own very soon, after that we take Alexandria, after that we take Antiochia and after that we take Yerevan. Those are the five holy sites. And then we have Prester John where as Ethiopia we need to have course on Alexandria, Antioch and Constantinople. Like I said if you're doing that don't form Axum immediately because the achievement will disappear so only form Axum after you've done that achievement if you're going for it. And like I said by around the 1490s your game should look a little something like this. Let me know in the comments below what's the next nation that I should do a guide on. If you want to watch me do stuff like this live you can follow me on twitch.tv slash the Red Hawk live and and if you want to catch up on stuff from over there, you can subscribe to the second channel where we do playthroughs. Link is in the description. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like. It really helps out a lot. And if you want to see more guides or more U4 videos in general, definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. And you can become a member today and join the Discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.